Okay, I wanted to show you how we're going to do some of the recording at uh, your, your campuses. So I'm here at Northeast. Um, you can find in the dock this Tracks Live application. If you don't see it in the dock, uh, you can open up your apps and find it in here. Um, so let's go ahead and launch that. Also go ahead and make sure that your soundboard is turned on. Um, it does need to connect to the soundboard. As we can see, it uses the, um, the audio interface that connects directly to that soundboard. You can see some of our previous sessions in here, but um, if you're starting a new recording, we want to come into the templates here. And I've got uh, one that's just labeled recording with today's date. Um, I date them just so that way if we make changes to a template in the future, we can know which one's most recent. I probably could use a version number or whatever, but I'm just using a date for right now. So you can click on it and hit open selected or you can double click. Uh, what this does, it starts the process of, you know, creating a file structure for all this stuff. So uh, it's asking us to create a new session. Uh, ideally, if we can, I'd like to put the new session on a different drive. So inside of your computer, you actually have two hard drives here at Northeast. Now at uh, High Point, uh, where we may also use this, there's a different file structure. Just find any place that makes sense to put this. But on um, the Northeast one, we actually have another drive called Storage. It just happens to be larger. Um, so if you can uh, go back to your main level of Northeast Lighting Computer, choose uh, Storage, and then give a name. Um, so it automatically creates the folder structure. So your naming is going to be NE for Northeast. It's going to be today's date. Um, by uh, month, day, year, uh, with the, the zero delineator if it's a single character. Um, and then just for this uh, video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put delete me, uh, just because we don't, we don't need to save that, or it might just help people know we're doing a test. So once you have created a new session under storage with the name, you hit save, and Tracks Live starts to build out all of the different channels that are necessary to be able to record. Um, so if we um, kind of expand this window, hopefully. Oh, well, maybe it's not going to expand. Oh, there we are. Uh, you have the ability to you know, enlarge your track list uh, or shrink it, whatever. It doesn't matter so much that you are able to see what's here. Um, what does matter, though, is that we have these red dots all over your channels. Um, this indicates that it is enabled for recording. You can see that I've got a couple that are not enabled, and these are just channels that don't have inputs for them. Um, so they're, they're just not enabled, and it saves a little drive space if we don't record stuff that we don't need. You know, For example, if you didn't have a drummer, you could actually uncheck all of the drummer uh, channels um, but in reality, you know, if a volunteer is running this or you're looking for something quick to do on a Sunday to get this going, just leave it as it is based off the template. Um, there are a few things in here that you can look at, like uh, this button here will open up your um, just kind of meters to show you what's going on. And like if I were to clap, any open mic in the room is going to register that there's some sound coming through. Um, not necessary, but if you wanted to just see are these channels lined up, which they should be, um, this is a way to check that. There's also a little tiny meter next to each of the uh, record buttons over here, but um, tough to see those. Um, these meters across the top are also relevant, but also difficult to see. At either rate, you're ready to record. So um, basically as uh, you approach the, like say the countdown before service starts, uh, you want to start recording. And so your record button is this, um, the circle here next to this enlightened uh, square. So you would hit the circle button. This thing starts to, you know, create a file and it just kind of like will continue on. Um, if you wanted to watch this as service goes, you can kind of use your slider up here on the top right to, to enlarge the, the view or shrink the view um, in order to kind of see that it's progressing. And then when you're ready to uh, stop your recording, you're going to hit your stop button here, and that stops that recording. Now, one thing to be aware of, if you're stopping the recording, like say between services or like maybe your recorded practice and you wanted to continue to record the service, if you were to hit record again, this, uh, this playhead has actually gone back to the very beginning. And if we hit record, it's going to overwrite what we had already recorded. And so we want to be careful to make sure that if you do have a, uh, if you stop and then restart, um, that you're moving that playhead. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. We'll move the playhead to another point in time. 
um, yeah, down here we can click and slide, find another point in time, and then hit record, and it will start recording there. By creating that gap, and it really doesn't matter how big that gap is, it ensures that you're not overriding something that you had done previously. So we can stop again, we can move ahead, um, record again. And as you can see, each time that we stop and then uh, give it a second to catch up, the playhead goes to the beginning of the most recent recording. So you want to just make sure that you're, you're recording your stuff into a new section of this. All right, so then uh, I haven't worked out all of the export options yet, but I do know that if we just simply save it, um, so you'll go to file and hit save. It will save everything that you have just done. Um, that way, in, um, as the week goes, myself or Joe, we can come in here and grab these recordings, save them out off somewhere that you know, makes sense um, because eventually this hard drive will get filled up. Um, and we don't want to fill up the drive on the local uh, thing. So I may create an automation that takes the files off of the local drive and puts them out onto OneDrive or, or some other kind of storage for us. But uh, for right now, um, just record, hit save, and walk away. And when you're all done, you can just simply hit the, uh, you know, quit it just the way as you always would any other application. So um, hopefully this makes sense. If not, if you have questions, you know, certainly please give me a call. Let me know. Thanks.